Hello, true duelists. My name's Gregory Feganite, and welcome to the new card report. You can tell Rage of the Abyss is a throwback set because the set code is Rhoda. Makes sense we got six Sam support in that set because Warriors. But you can't talk about throwback sets without some nostalgia bait. And what makes for better nostalgia bait than another Red Eyes card getting its fifth form of strategy for that series of cards? I mean, I mean, yeah, it's, it's Bandit Keith support overall, but there's a fucking Red Eyes card and Lord knows that's way funnier than anything else going on in this deck. Starting with the big bad trap that matters most for this deck, let's take a look at Enhanced Metal Morph. This is the continuous trap that new cards are focused around, so I'm getting it out of the way so that the rest of these cards can fucking make sense. You activate this by tributing a face-up monster to special summon a monster that cannot be normal summoner set that mentions Enhanced Metal Morph from your hand, deck, or graveyard. And you can then equip this card to that monster. While it's equipped, that monster will gain 400 attack and defense and will become untargetable by monster or spell effects and indestructible by monster or spell effects as well. In terms of attack only, this card is worse than the original since that one gained half the attack whenever it attacked. And this one does it, and on some level that's kind of funny to me. But obviously it's way better because it protects your monsters from destruction and targeting from monster effects and spell cards, not to mention getting monsters from the deck that actually do things beyond being summoned by Metal Morph. And as cool as Metal Zoa is, it just was never really that good. Never, no, not never really. It was dog shit from day one. And while I haven't covered the monsters yet, I can assure you they are at least decent. You'll find out. I suppose it makes sense that Metal Morph became a ninjutsu art kind of deck, because how else do you modernize Metal Zoa? Or better yet, the obligatory Red Eyes card that has nothing to do with Red Eyes. Guess what we're talking about next? Yes, Red Eyes Black Full Metal Dragon, the level 8 Dark Machine, what is naming, with 3400 attack, 2400 defense, and it can't be normal summoned or set. It has to first be special summoned with Enhanced Metal Morph after having tributed a level 5 or higher Dragon Monster. Well then. This of course has two effects going for it. The first activates in the hand to reveal itself, set a Metal Morph Trap card from your deck to your field, and then shuffle itself into the deck. And while it's on the field, when the opponent activates a card or effect, you can quick effect negate the activation, then you can inflict damage equal to half the original attack of one of their attack position monsters. Well then, that's actually good. It puts itself back in the deck to unbrick your garnet, so to say, even though it doesn't need to be, it's just it, it gets itself out of the hand and replaces itself with the card to summon itself out. That's, uh, that's something other Red Eyes cards can only dream of, you know, being that good. And it's even a burn and an Omni Negate, all in one card to occasionally help you win in time and at least protect your board. There's not much else to say here, it's just, it's good. That's incredibly rare for Red Eyes cards. And yes, I can hear you typing away that Black Metal Dragon, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, and Black Meteor Dragon, and even arguably Dragoon as a Red Eyes card are all good as well. And that's correct. There are now five good Red Eyes cards out of the fucking 50 the deck has. Truly, I'm out of line for saying most of them aren't good. You alone have deduced that Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon was an exception and decided that that fucking... Turret, you, you are intelligent. That's <laughs> cool, dude. And now to get away from this Red Eyes unrelated piece of shit, let's get back to our Metal Morphin time friends. It's definitely a Power Rangers joke in here that I missed. This fucking sucks. Metal Zoa X is hella dope and mad cool and a subtle reference to Jason in space as shown by the giant X on its artwork. Another level 8 dark machine monster, this has 3000 attack, 2300 defense and the same effect in hand to reveal itself, shuffle it into the deck and get Metal Morph on your field. It also can't be normal summoner set, needing to be enhanced Metal Morph summoned by tributing a level 5 or higher fiend, but don't worry, it's not a boring Omni Negate, it's instead a twice per turn pop when your opponent activates a spell card or monster effect. And that's a spell card or effect, so even if they activate the effect of a spell card by Banish Self in the Graveyard, or the effect of a spell card that's already face up, like a continuous or field spell that does apply, that's pretty, pretty schnifty. Now it does target, but it's also a quick effect, so it's, it's just solid. Two pops when the opponent plays the game to disrupt them is solid. It unbricks itself and gets halfway to being on board, seeing as how you just need to independently get a level five fiend to be tributing with your enhanced metal morph. It's got that it's got the stats to be beaten shit down, 3400 when equipped, and it's at least playable, which is a massive upgrade to the original. 
and it's a cool way to play Metal Four for in the current year. So yeah, it's a Jason X Murder Man in Space. That's uh, that's all I got. I got fuck all to say. Let's just move on. <laughs> Fiend Beast Zoa is both the name of this card and just two monster types followed by the name of a vanilla from 2003. It should not be a surprise, but it does have the original Zoa's stats, being a level 7 Dark Fiend with 2600 attack and 1900 defense. If your opponent controls a monster, you can normal summon this without tribute, which is pretty nice to see. And if they don't, while this card is in your hand, you can special summon it for free in defense position, but if you don't already have a copy of Enhanced Metal Morph in your graveyard, your opponent will get to summon a monster from their hand for free as well. Which fucking sucks, but I guess just play Foolish Burial Goods or some shit, I, I, I don't know. On the plus side, however you summon it out, it can activate the effect to set a Metal Morph trap from your deck in the main phase, so it does at least set up Metal Zoa X all by itself regardless of how you summoned it out. Sucks a lot more if you have to give the opponent free advantage to do this, but I, I, I don't know. I, I guess that's just what you get for not going second <laughs> in the trap deck. I don't, I don't fucking know. Uh, normal summoning itself makes it like the shittiest paker tops you can imagine because it, it'll you know get the trap and then uh, when you get the activated then you can get your pops going but that's uh, that's about the only joke I can think of for this so let's move on to the weird ass copycat card instead metal copycat it's the retrain of copycat I've been waiting for and let me tell you yep I guess it's metal. This is a level 1 light spellcaster with zero attack and defense that if normal or special summoned can set a metal morph trap from your deck and if you already have enhanced metal morph when you do so you get to draw a card. So it's a cute little plus one potential. You can also declare a car monster type, not a card type, and this will become that type until the end of the opponent's turn, which seems useless until you realize that this card also gains four levels on the opponent's turn. So it immediately becomes level five, and then if you've called Dragon or Feed, you can get the Metal Man of your choice. Man being machine. Now, it is solid in that it sets up the entire deck by itself, getting you the Metal Morph, becoming the needed type and level, and, you know, everything that the deck wants. It just also dies so goddamn hard to Effect Veiler and Imperm that it's hilarious to think about. You don't get the trap, you don't become the type you need even if you hard drew the trap, and you've wasted your normal for, to do so, pro probably. I mean, you could have specialed it, but also, <laughs> if you used your normal, that's a fucking ouchie. It's uh, true for a lot of cards, I know, losing to Imperm, but like, it's just really funny. And it's, it's like, this does so little if it gets Impermed. It's just gruesome. That donut stat line doesn't help. It's also very funny to me that there's now two things that want you to have Enhanced Metal Morph in the graveyard with no means for it to get there beyond the opponent putting it there for you outside of, I don't know, uh, Foolish Burial Goods and Magic Planter. Like, the deck wants you to have lost a boss monster, apparently, to be getting these weird pluses or not negs, which is just weird to me. It, like, it, whatever, this card's fine for the deck, it does what it needs to, but yummy yummy, that's an imperm target I don't want. Don't worry though, this deck does have a single spell card for you to not be able to search at all. Approaching Machine is a normal spell card that'll add a monster that mentions Enhanced Metal Morph or any Metal Morph trap from your deck or graveyard back to your hand. That's right, it's a Rota Plus. Search or Recycle, now that's a solid spell card. And if you control a Metal Morph Trap, you can banish this card from your grave, then target an opponent's defense position monster, and switch it to attack. Really? <laughs> I was gonna make my usual, why can't we make Rotas without just being Rota? Like, why does every Rota need three effects nowadays? But the bonus effect it has is so completely useless, I, I'm not sure it'll ever come up. Like like twice a year maybe <laughs> what, what the grave effects completely fucking useless but it doesn't need to be useful because it's Rota it's so uh, it, it, it's playable by virtue of searching any of the monsters or even the traps on the off chance you don't want to search any of your monsters hell it even searches the OG metal morph or rail metal morph remember rare metal morph that shit's crazy I don't remember it either what the fuck am I talking I'm probably gaslighting all of us with this let's just move on and last up is another trap, a normal trap that does not have Metal Morph in the name, but that's so that it can be an anime reference, because you see, we can't just include Metal Morph in the name of the Metal Morph deck card, we need to name it Time Engine in reference to that thing Joey did in 2004, and then it just have it always be treated as a Metal Morph in, in the effect text, because what the fuck is simplicity? We're playing Yu-Gi-Oh, folks, we're getting needlessly complicated whether we want to or not. 
This card is activated if a monster you control is destroyed by battle or the opponent's card effect. To let you target one of your destroyed monsters, special summon it, and then if it's a level 5 or higher machine, and you've got a Metal Morph Trap on your field or in your graveyard, you can then destroy as many monsters as your opponent controls as possible, and burn the opponent for damage equal to the monster you summon back's original attack. A classic case of a card that's really only arguably worth considering because you can search it, or in this case, set it, but uh, either, either way. Uh, it's, it's, it's relying on the opponent, or you crashing into the opponent, which would be like at turn three on the earliest, since you also have to set this, and then, and then <laughs> you probably have to crash into it, because if you've searched it all and set this, then the opponent is aware of it and can try to play around it. And it also has to be a machine that's destroyed, so you can't even get back, you know, Little Zoa or, or the copycat. Like, you need to bring back Metal Zoa X or Full Metal Dragon. And it's, it's, just, it's just so much to ask for effectively a Regeki and a Burn. Like, the more I look at it, the less I like it. It only helps once you're losing to Reborn and Regeki and, and only for two of the cards in your deck. Like, you can play it, it's easy enough to access, but I feel it falls a little short of being worth it. Need art, though, coming out of the time machine trap. Get, get it, Joey, 2004. Please buy product. All in all, this is, if nothing else, a great new staple for Red Eyes, with Full Metal Dragon, uh, you know, being great, because you can normal summon Black Metal Dragon, link it off, search Full Metal, Full Metal Effect, set Enhanced Metal Morph, and then if slash when you get a level 5 or higher Dragon in your Red Eyes deck out, you've got an Omni Negate on the opponent's turn. So that's, if nothing else, playable in Red Eyes. Uh, the, the fifth unrelated to the other four Red Eyes themes has finally done it and made a single playable card. As for this deck as a standalone thing, I mean it works. You got a, it's got a negate, it's got two pops, big ass beaters 34 to 3800 attack that are immune to most monster and spell interactions. The trick is that it dies really hard to ash because enhanced metal morph is a hell of a neg when you don't get your monster out. Not to mention new Zoa giving the opponent a free card depending on how it's been summoned, and the general fact that the weird want to have enhanced metal morph in your grave with no meaningful way to put it, or even benefit for being there beyond like not giving the opponent advantage or drawing a card off your imperm target. Like it's, <laughs> it's just a, it's a little weird, a little wonky and inconsistent. Uh, I, I get the, uh, I get, I get that it's designed to help if you're losing, I guess, but why, why design it like that? I, I just don't know. It's clearly no big meta threat, but there's some neat anime references here, and once again, it's at least functional. It's doing something more than the dinosaurs from Duelist Nexus did, so if that's the bar of quality we have to set, so be it. James Cameron hasn't come to Yu-Gi-Oh! yet to raise that bar. Fucking sick reference to that episode of South Park. Uh, either way, it's, it's modern Metal Morph and Zoa, and the fact that it's not entirely pack filler, I suppose, is a win enough. So congrats to Red Eyes, you finally got your fifth good card. Truly, this is a miracle. And so that'll wrap it up for this new card report. Just covering some new cards in this one. The update will be out on Friday, as always. Until then, I've been your host, Blue Tie Cool Guy, and I want to thank you and the LIFD Magnetic Support Team guy. Holy crap, this sentence fell apart. Thanks to LIFD for the support. That's right, the best way to supply your cards and the true duelist way to support my channel. That promo code WideYourStrats15. Uh, I'm, I'm losing my voice as we speak, but it's okay because that's what this is for. Type it in at the checkout, click the link in the description, help me out financially, and maybe one day the acoustics won't sound so awful. Until then, I've been me. Thanks to LIFD for the support. Thank you for watching and hit subscribe to impress that smoking Italian wife to become a true duelist and so that I can finally end this sentence and drink from this bottle of water.